5.5 is called z-scores. When we're comparing sets of data, most of the time we can't compare directly because either the means or the standard deviations are not the same. So if data is normally distributed, so only if it's normally distributed, we can use z-scores to compare this data. A z-score is a standardized value that indicates the number of standard deviations the value is above or below the mean. For a given score x in a normal distribution, so where x is our data entry, x is equal to the mean plus our z-score times our standard deviation. So if we solve for z, we get that our z-score is equal to our data entry x minus our mean divided by the standard deviation. A z-score tells us where on the standard normal distribution curve the data sits. So for example, if we had a z-score of 1.5, the data would sit here in between 1 and 2 standard deviations away from our mean. Z-scores can also tell us the percent of data less than a given value or to the left on the standard normal curve. So with the use of a z-score table located on page 592 of your textbook, or a more complete table can be found at this link. So if we had a z of 1.5, we look for a z, 1.5, and we are going, looking for 1.50. So if we match these up, we get the probability to be 93% or 0 0.9332. So let's look at the following example. Haley and Sergey belong to a running club in Vancouver. Part of their training involves a 200 meter sprint. Below are normally distributed times for the 200 meter sprint in Vancouver and on a recent trip to Lake Louise. At higher altitudes, run times improve. So at which location was Haley's runtime better when compared to the club results? So let's find the z-score for Haley's run at Vancouver and Lake Louise. So at Vancouver, we get our z-score is equal to our data, or in this time, or in this case, Haley's runtime, minus our mean runtime divided by our standard deviation, which equals to Haley's runtime, which was 24.95, minus our mean, which was 25.75 divided by our standard deviation, which was 0 0.62. That gives us a z-score of negative 1.29. At Lake Louise, we have z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma, which is equal to our data entry, which is 24.77, which is Haley's runtime at Lake Louise, minus our mean at Lake Louise, which was 25.57, divided by our standard deviation at Lake Louise, which was 0.60 we get our z-score to be negative 1.33. So our second step then is to sketch a normal standard curve and compare the z-scores on the curve. So here is my normal standard curve, club running time, with my z-scores and my frequencies. So if I plot my z-scores, I get this one is negative 1.29 and this one is negative 1.33. So the lower score means that she was relatively faster at Lake Louise. The reason that is, is because it's farther away from our mean, so it's further below our mean, therefore she did better. So what can you say about a data value if its z-score is negative, positive, or zero? So if our z-score is negative, we know that our data value is below our mean. If our z-score is positive, we know that our data value is above our mean. And if our z-score is zero, we know that our data value is equal to our mean. So now let's look at using z-score tables to find the percent of data less than a given value. Let's look at the following example. IQ tests are sometimes used to measure a person's intellectual capacity at a particular time. IQ scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So if somebody scored 119 on an IQ test, how does this score compare, to, compare with the scores of the general population? So our first step then would be to find their z-score for 119. So to find our z-score, we use our formula for z, which is z is equal to our data value x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which is equal to, in this case, our person scored 119 minus the mean, which was 100, divided by our standard deviation of 15, which equals 1.27. Our second step is to sketch our normal curve and draw the line indicating the z-score of our data value 119, and then we'll shade the region we want to find. So here I drew my line for my data value of 119, which resulted in a z of 
So here's 1.27. Now, we want to find we want to find how does this score compare to the scores of the general population. So let's see, let's figure out what this side would be. Let's figure out the percent of data values below 119. So if we look on our handy dandy Z score chart at our Z of 1.27, so we find Z of 1, Z of 1.2, Z of 1.2, Z of 1.27, we get 0 0.8980. So we have 0 0.8980, which then we can write as a percent. So we multiply 0 0.8980 by 100 to get 89.80% of people scoring less than 119. But if the question asks what percent of people scored higher than our score of 119, we would have to subtract this percentage from our whole, which was 100% to get 10.2% of people scoring higher than 119. We can also use Z scores to determine data values. So now let's look at the following example. Athletes should replace their running shoes before the shoes lose their ability to absorb shock. Running shoes lose their shock absorption after a mean distance of 640 kilometers with a standard deviation of 160 kilometers. Zach is an elite runner and wants to replace his shoes at a distance when only 25% of people would replace their shoes. At what distance should he replace his shoes? So our first step is to sketch the standard normal curve, which I've done. Our second step is to use the z-score table to find a z-score where 25% of data values are to the left. So if we use our z-score chart, we need to find 25. So we need to find 0.25. 0 0.3, 0 0.257. So it looks to be between here. We have 0 0.2483 and 0 0.2514. So this gives us a Z of negative 0 0.6. Okay. Negative 0 0.69, negative 0 0.68, negative 0 0.67. So it's between 0 0.67 and 0 0.68 pretty much exactly halfway in between. So I'm going to say that my Z is negative 0 0.675. So our Z score is negative 0 0.675. I'm going to plot this on my standard normal curve right here. So we need to find at what distance should he replace his shoes. So we need to find the actual number of kilometers that pertains to this Z score value of negative 0 0.675. How we do that is we use our formula for X. So we have that x is equal to mu, our average, plus z, our z score, times our standard deviation, which is equal to our mean was 640 kilometers, plus our standard deviation was negative 0.675 times, oh, our z was negative 0.675, sorry, and our standard deviation was 160 kilometers. This works out to 530 kilometers. So therefore, Zach should replace his shoes after 532 kilometers. We can also determine the percent of data between two Z scores. So say we had a Z of 0.24 and a Z of 0.253. So I sketch my standard normal curve, and I plot 0.24 to be about here, and 2.53 to be about here. So then let's look at the Z score table to find the percents of both Z scores. So the percent to the left of 2.53 is, let's find 2 2.53, 2.5, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53. It's 0.9943. Likewise, let's find the percent to the left of 0.24. So if we do that, we get 0 0.5948. So let's convert these to percents. By multiplying them by 100, we get 99.43% and 59.48%. So the percent between then would be 99.43% minus 59.48% to give us this value in between, which is 39.95%. We can use z-scores to solve quality control problems as well. So let's look at this example. The ABC company produces bungee cords. 
When the manufacturing process is running well, the lengths of the bungee cords produced are normally distributed, with a mean of 45.2 cm and a standard deviation of 1.3 cm. Bungee cords that are shorter than 42 cm or longer than 48 cm are rejected by the quality control workers. So if 20,000 bungee cords are manufactured each day, how many bungee cords would you expect the quality control workers to reject? So let's find the z-scores for our maximum and minimum lengths. So if we use a formula for z and plug in our values, we get that z for our minimum is negative 2.46. Likewise, if we do the same thing for our maximum of 48, so we have 48 minus our mean divided by our standard deviation, gives us 2.15 for z. So if we sketch our standard normal curve and plot the z-scores, we get negative 2.46 to be about here and 2.15 to be about here. So we're ne we need to find the percent of rejected cords. So we need to find the percent of cords that are here and here. So let's see if we can do that. So let's use our z-score table to find the percent of rejected cords that were too short. So the area to the left of negative 2.46 is equal to, we find negative 2 point four negative two point four six is point zero zero six nine. Likewise we find the area to the left of two point one five which equals to ninety eight point or nine eight point nine eight four two. So the area to the left of two point one five is nine ninety eight percent and the area to the left of negative two point four six is zero point six nine percent. So then, if our area to the left of 2.15 is 98%, our area to the right of 2.15 is going to be 100% minus 98.42%, or 1 minus 0.9842, which equals 0 0.0158. So when we're finding the number of bungee cords that were rejected, we add up our percent of our rejected to get 2.27% total rejected, and then we multiply that by 20,000 bungee cords to get 454 bungee cords that were rejected. We can also use z-scores to determine warranty periods for different products. Look at this example. A manufacturer of personal music players has determined that the mean life of the players is 32.4 months with a standard deviation of 6.3 months. So what length of warranty should be offered if the manufacturer wants to restrict repairs to less than 1.5% of all the, rep all the players sold? So our first step is to write the percent as a decimal. So 1.5% is equal to 0 0.015. Our second step is to find the decimal on our z-score table. So we're looking for 0 0.015. 0 0.015. And our z-score value is negative 2.17. Our third step is using the formula for x, solve for x by plugging in our values of z, standard deviation, and the mean. So we get that x is equal to our mean plus z-score times our standard deviation, which is equal to 32.4 plus negative 2.17 times 6.3, which equals out to 18.729 months for exactly 1.5% of the players to be repaired. But we need to look for less than 1.5% of the players to be repaired. So our warranty would have to be less than 18.729 months, or you could round down and say our warranty needs to be less than 18 months.